Good morning, y'all, and welcome to another episode of Cooking for One or Two on Apron Strings. And today, I have taken a recipe for tomato basil soup that was given to me by Linda Jenkins, uh, and it was originally for the Instapot. And I have downsized it to where we can cook it on the stovetop for just one or two. Usually when I make soup, oh my goodness, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. I'll start out declaring that I'm only going to make this little pot, but then it gets to the top and I pour it in a bigger one and I end up with enough to feed the army. So today we're going to do a small batch of tomato basil soup. You can add your own grilled cheese to it or cornbread or whatever you want to put with it. But I've got my ingredients out and I was going to point out to y'all um, you know I have the freeze dryer and I have a really good vacuum seal of the Backmaster 215. This is basil that I grew and this is done from July of 18. I grew my basil and I um, harvested it and put it on the freeze dryer and look at that pretty green color. It looks like leaves off of a fresh plant. So I'm going to be using some of my freeze dried basil today and then I'm going to put it back in the Backmaster seal it back up and it'll be good indefinitely. I'm going to use a, a can of uh, Contadina fire roasted diced tomatoes with garlic in them. That's going to add a little bump of flavor. We have garlic going into it but this will this will be good seasoned tomatoes. Some white onion. I have already used a little bit of it. White onion and then we'll have garlic, and basil, and oregano, and at the end we'll either add sour cream or heavy cream, one or the other, to make it creamy. So I'll get y'all over here to see what we're doing, and we'll get our soup making. We've got to saute the onion until it's translucent, and then add the garlic for just a little bit, until it smells like good cooking garlic, and then we'll get everything put together. Now you can either use your immersion blender and blend it, or you can have it chunky, and I prefer it chunky. So it's up to you, uh, the texture that you want in your soup. So it'll be enough for one or two people. So let's okay, to get going. started. Uh, the recipe calls for olive oil, but I'm going to put a little bit of butter, about two tablespoons, and some olive oil in my pan. And go ahead and let that be, I'm going to put it on low where it'll go ahead and just start to uh, melt. About a tablespoon of olive oil. And then we're going to get our onions in, and then I'm going to, I love my garlic press. And if y'all have one, that's wonderful. If you don't, you need one. Now, sometimes my hands don't have enough strength to mash it, so I just rest it on my table, and that gives me some leverage. And I get my garlic out. Let's see if I'm going to have enough. Mmm, y'all know how I like garlic. That just smells good. Let me see how much I cut it down to on the garlic. We need about a fourth of a teaspoon, so we're going to be a little bit over, which that's okay with me. Y'all know that? Not much over, though. Look at that. That's a heaping fourth of a teaspoon, and that's one huge clove of garlic. So. When the time comes, I'll get it in over here. Now, my recipe calls for vegetable broth. But today, I'm fresh out of vegetable broth, but I always have chicken and beef broth. And if I don't, I have better than bouillon that I use. But I'm going to use a low-sodium chicken broth, and we're going to need one cup of that. But I'm going to let my oil and my butter get ready over here. Get me a little wooden spoon to stir with. Man, I love the smell of butter. While my oil. onion's cooking down, I'm going to go ahead and open up my basil and uh, get me out about a teaspoon of it. If y'all don't have one of these Pria lids, look on eBay and get you one. They're wonderful. You can open your jars without ruining your lids. Hear that seal? That's a good seal. Oh my goodness, it smells so pretty. I'm going to put that in here and then I'll measure it out. You can see it just powders easily because it's uh, freeze dried. 
but I want to show y'all. It's just as pretty. Well, maybe I can get up close and let you see. See when you freeze dry it, it keeps its color. It's got that beautiful, vibrant green color, and then it just crushes just, just perfectly. And because I like basil, I'm going to put a little extra in there. But now basil can be overpowering, so you don't want to put too much. Alrighty, I'm going to take this over to the vac master and seal it back up. You want to go over there with me? You've seen it before, but well, I think I'm going to go over there and seal it back up. My lid's not going on good. You just barely put it on there. You don't do it real tight. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off and get y'all over there to watch me reseal it instead of making you dizzy and tugging you along behind okay, me. Okay, I've come over here and got it set and ready to ready to go. So let me put it in here. And it'll seal it right up for me. While it's sealing, look, my friend that always gives me figs gave me five cuttings off of her fig tree. I'm going to get out there in a little bit and get these dipped in some rooting hormone and uh, get them planted. And I may video it and let y'all watch the rooting process for my fig trees. I'm going to have some fig trees for my yard. And when she cuts the branches, when she cut the branches off, they've already got some little buds on them, so I'm hoping that they'll just root and go ahead and grow right. Okay, I've got my basil sealed back up. I'll put it right back out there on the shelf until I need it again. Let's get back over here to making some soup. Okay, the onion has cooked down, and it's a little bit, some of it's caramelized a smidge. Maybe y'all need to see that. Let me see. See, the onion is cooked down and some of it's browning a little bit. So I'm going to add in my garlic. I've added the garlic and I'm going to let it cook down a little bit until it's fragrant. And um, then we will get the rest of the ingredients in our soup pot. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add in my diced tomatoes. One can, it's a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. Fire roasted, going to give it lots of flavor. I'm going to add in one-fourth of a teaspoon of oregano, and then I'm going to add in a heaping teaspoon of uh, basil, and we've got one cup of the chicken broth because I didn't have vegetable broth, but that's just going to bump the flavor up a little bit. So I'm going to give this a stir and just let it cook down some. It's just a, a little bit of salt. We're just going to put a pinch of salt. I think it calls for about an eighth of a teaspoon. So this is, I think, a fourth here. So I'm just going to put a little bit in and we'll taste it. I'll put it on a medium and just let that cook a little bit. And uh, I'll bring y'all back when it has simmered and it's cooked down some. And we'll add our cream to it and we'll taste it. Doesn't take long to make this. Just look at all that goodness bubbling away in there. I'm going to let it reduce a little bit so the flavors will be a little more intense. And then I'll um, put a serving up. But it's going to be just one big serving or a couple of small servings. And we'll have us some soup. Y'all, I decided that I would uh, get my potato masher, which is the ones with the little holes in the bottom, and just give it a little mash so it would be thicker. And I like it, the consistency a whole lot better doing this. I have an immersion blender, but everybody does it, but most people would have a potato masher. So, let me get this over there closer where y'all can see. See, it has the holes in the bottom like that. Mashed it perfectly. Okay, now I'm going to get my cream added. 
And then we're going to make one more thing. We're going to make some broccoli cornbread to go with this. Okay, let's put about... Let's put about a fourth of a cup and then we may add some more. This is a half cup measure. I'm going to go ahead and cut my fire off. You know how that makes it that gorgeous pink color? Well, we got it going on. It looks like tomato basil soup to me. What I'm going to do, I'll bring the camera over here right quick and show y'all. And I'm just going to put the lid on it and let it sit here until um, I get the cornbread ready. And then we'll... Uh, get it all dished up. Okay, see it's got that nice pink color that tomato basil soup has. So let me get all the ingredients together to make our cornbread and we'll get it cooked and then I'll have lunch. Okay y'all, I'm getting ready to make the cornbread and it calls for a box of chopped broccoli and all I had was the whole flowers. So I just put them in the microwave because they were frozen. And I'm just going to chop them because it's 12 ounces and that's what's in a box of chopped broccoli. I've got to melt one stick of butter and I'm going to do it in my little OXO measuring cup because it's silicone and it won't be hot to get it out and pour it into my... Oh! And I'm going to set that on my microwave for about 40 seconds. I've chopped a medium, small to medium onion. It's going to need four eggs. Let me get this broccoli chopped up a little bitty. Box of Jiffy cornbread mix. There we go with my good old Jiffy stuff that I love so well. Everything they've got is good. Their pie crust mix, their pizza crust mix, it's all good. Their little cake mixes, we've used all of it, I think, at one time or another in a video. And it's so, and it's economical. That's what's neat. They're, they're priced to where you can afford to use it if you want to take a shortcut and not make from scratch. Now you can cook this in just a regular skillet. I like to cook it in muffins because it makes 12 big fat muffins. And uh, we like to put it in the icebox in a Ziploc bag and then just warm it up as needed. So that's what I'll do. Uh, we, I'll use me one with my soup, and then the rest of it will be preserved in the in the ice box till we get ready to want one. Sometimes Troy will just warm him up one or two of them for his meal or snack if he's hungry. And that works just right. It's just as melted as I need it to be. Let me get a stirring bowl. Okay, I'm going to put my four eggs into my bowl, and I'm going to whip them real well. If some of y'all don't know or aren't familiar with Jiffy, this is the cornbread mix that I'm using, one box. And I've got my eggs whisked up really well. Can you see? I'm trying to see. Yeah. Just to where they're creamy. Blended well, and we're fixing to get it all put in there together and get it in the muffin tins. Okay, I've got my Jiffy uh, mix in here in the eggs, and I'm just going to give that a good stir with my Swedish dough hook. I've got a, okay, I'm going to add my one stick of melted butter. Now, you know it's got to be good if it's got butter in it. This is good cornbread. Make a salad and have a piece of this cornbread. You got a good a good lunch or supper or whatever. Truth is, I like it for breakfast. Okay, I'm gonna add in my onion. Doesn't have a lot of ingredients, but it's got a lot of flavor. Let me just tell you, this is delicious. And I go a while without making it, and I forget how good it is. And we just eat it like little pigs. I made some last week, 
and it's gone. So I thought, well, this would be a good video to go with our soup. So I'm just stirring this in, blended it all real good. Something always wants to hop out of the bowl on me and make a mess. That's why I told y'all I know how to clean up messes. I make enough of them. Okay, I've got that mixed up. Let me show you. See, it's just all gulped in there together. And now I'm going to add two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. Butter and cheese, oh my. It's a guaranteed goodness. I'm thinking, I bet you could add some shredded chicken to this and go ahead and cook it like in a 9 by 13 and it'd make a good casserole. I might try that one day and let y'all know how it turns out or bring you along for the ride. Okay. Tell y'all I like recipe cards that are handwritten. My daughter-in-law, before she and Troy married, and they've been married 25 years, gave me this recipe. And she gave credit at the bottom for herself and then her aunt Hazel Pitts and her aunt uh, Lola Wells. So I've had this for 25 or 26 years and I use it often. Alrighty, let me get what we just call a tablespoon and I can just dip out and put in my pan. Do y'all do that? We always call this size spoon a tablespoon and the other ones we call them teaspoons. That's just how I grew up. Okay, I'm just going to put some in each muffin tin. Okay, let me clean my pans up a little bit. I'll get these in to cook while I get another one ready to go in when they come out. Okay, I'm going to put it in the oven. Uh, let's see what the recipe card says. I don't think it gives a time. About 30 minutes at 350. So let me get these over there in my June oven. Well, it was a snug fit, but I got them in there. So I'm going to get my other little muffin pan that's used and not too pretty, but I don't want it to feel like just because something pretty came along, I didn't use it anymore. So I'll get one of my little old ones out and spray it with Pam and get the rest of the muffin ready to put in my On that last pan. little bit of dough, I put it in little mini muffin tins. So there'll be about two bites to the muffin. That'll be perfect to put with bone soup. Hey, I want to remind y'all, too, to go over to Facebook and check out JJ's Shop Works. Uh, that's the guy that made my um, serving board. And he's, he, my son has just ordered some uh, Lazy Susans to put on each end of the table to put the salt and the condiments on. So go over and check it out. He makes custom orders. He'll make whatever you need. And look at the pictures on his page of the things he's made. Also, don't forget to go over to the Wellness Homesteader and check out her recipes and her soap. And um, she sells that stuff in her canning mats that I showed you uh, yesterday that she had made for me. These are made to order. Your, your theme fabric, she can do it in your theme fabric. And she'll charge a little extra, but she will embroidery your name or your uh, YouTube channel or whatever on the back. They are lined with Insulbrite, which is a Pellon fabric that reflects heat. So whatever surface you put it on, your surface is protected because it won't go through the Insulbrite. The Wellness Homesteader. Check her out. Subscribe to her channel. Watch her videos. She's got some really good uh, recipes. But I love her soap. I bought the oatmeal with the honey, I forgot what all the name was on it, but it has the colloidal oatmeal in it and it makes your skin feel so soft. But she has gardener's hand soap, she has 
she has anything you could want. And she's been doing this about 30 years, so she's very well educated, and she's actually a nurse. So well educated in skincare and the natural products that are good for it. So go check out the Wellness Homesteader if you have it, and uh, tell her that I sent you over there, and put you in an order for a Kenan mat or uh, mitts to get stuff out of the oven. She makes all kinds of stuff. And then you can go down there and order an apron from Gay Jordan. That'd be a pretty good deal. Okay, y'all. We've got our soup ready. And our muffins, both sizes, some small and some large. And it's absolutely fabulous. Okay, y'all, The I made some, you know, 12 of the regular size cornbread muffins. And then I made a pan of the little minis. That broccoli cornbread is delicious. My little cousin came by for a visit, and I sent six of these bigger ones home with her, but she ate a cup of the tomato basil soup and said this was delicious. So let me just tell y'all, that recipe makes about four to five cups, probably four cups of um, soup. Just the perfect amount to not have a bunch of leftovers, but enough for two people to comfortably eat a little bit or one person to get full. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna show y'all something good here. I'm gonna taste this soup. I'm about to die to get some of it. I've already tasted it, cooking it, but. That is absolutely delicious. And y'all, it didn't take no time to make. Now, the only thing I did different, I went back and added another tablespoon of basil because I thought it needed it. But once you put that cream in there and let it, just let it warm, stay warm, cool itself down, whatever. That's one of the best tomato basils I've ever had. And I've eaten a bunch of tomato basil soup because I love it. So y'all need to try to make you some of the soup. And then you need to make you some broccoli cornbread. Now you can make this and freeze your little muffins and it freezes beautifully. So again, for one or two, make you a batch of it and freeze it in portions and you'll have it to bring out when you make for just you or with one more or whatever. So I hope y'all have learned a new recipe or two today and I hope you'll try it and let me know what you think about it. And next Thursday we'll have another meal for one or two, something good. I don't know yet just what it's going to be, but it'll be good. And um, in the meantime on the other days we'll have some good stuff too. Now, y'all know you multiply this and make a big old batch. But the issue today is for one or two, so we're trying to stick with it. The good Lord bless and keep y'all. And just remember, if you're on the mountaintop, God is still God and has all power. And if you're going through a valley, that same God is right there and he has all power. So it doesn't matter where your steps are. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. So it doesn't matter where his, your steps have led you, he's in control. So don't be fearful. Just put your trust in the one that controls everything. And enjoy every day. Remember, that's what we were going to do this year. We will get all the sweetness out of every day that we can get. Because we ain't promised tomorrow, and we don't know what tomorrow holds. The Lord bless and keep y'all. And we'll be right back here in this kitchen cooking up something good in a day or two.